evolution is the unifying idea in biology. In the B1 unit, we looked at natural selection as a basic mechanism for how species change. In B2, we looked at fossils and pentadactyl limbs as a couple of pieces of evidence that scientists can use to study how species change over time. In B3, and in this video, we'll look specifically at how human evolution can and has been studied. We'll look at fossils, stone tools, and mitochondrial DNA as three ways of doing this, before looking at factors that have driven human evolution in the past, including climate change. Evolution is the change in a species over time. Because this change is usually too slow to see over a human lifetime, scientists use fossils to look back over much longer periods of time. We can use fossils to study the ancestors of modern humans in this way. Modern humans all belong to the single species called Homo sapien. One ancestor of this species, that's closely related enough to belong to the same genus as us, are the now extinct Homo erectus and Homo habilis. Leakey was a scientist who worked in East Africa studying human evolution and animal behaviour, and he discovered many important fossils, including examples of Homo erectus and Homo habilis. A genus that was an ancestor of ours but is now totally extinct was Australopithecus. Lucy is an example of an Australopithecus fossil that has been dated at around 3.2 million years old. Even further into the past, we find another genus, Ardipithecus, which is also extinct. Ardi is a fossil belonging to this genus that has been dated at 4.4 million years old. When we compare these fossils, we can see a few important trends over this time period. The size of the skull cavity and therefore brain increasing. The loss of big toes, which used to enable us to grasp branches. Arms becoming relatively shorter and an overall increase in size. These changes help us to understand how our ancient ancestors lived. We can explain the changes we've just identified by seeing our ancestors move out of the trees into the open grasslands, where walking upright was an advantage. A larger brain led to increased intelligence, which would have led to more complex social groups and an increased ability to hunt large animals as a source of protein. Another way of studying human evolution is by looking at how the tools they have used has developed over time. As we've seen, human brain size has increased over the past few million years and this has allowed the development of tools from simply choosing suitably shaped rocks to shaping and refining them for a particular purpose, like using them as a knife or as an axe. This increase in sophistication and effectiveness can be seen in the examples here. The age of these stone tools can be worked out from either the age of the rock that they're found in or the age of a fossil that they're found alongside. The oldest stone tools found are at least 2.6 million years old, around about the same time as the Homo genus is first found. As evolution is a change in a species over time, studying the genetics of a species is a very accurate way of seeing how it's changed, or to see how closely related two groups are. The trouble is, as modern humans have only been around such a short period of time, there's very little genetic difference between populations across the world now compared to the earliest Homo sapiens. Luckily, a different source of DNA found in cells can be used. Mitochondria are the organelles found in all human cells that provide the energy needed by the cell for respiration. Mitochondria contain their own DNA, separate from the nucleus, and there are many mitochondria within each cell. Another feature of this mitochondrial DNA is that it mutates at a faster rate than nuclear DNA, so differences add up much more quickly. This makes it easier to tell the difference between the DNA from different groups that are only separated relatively recently. It's also less likely to have been degraded over time as it's better protected inside the mitochondria than DNA inside the nucleus. Because there are many mitochondria inside each cell, but only a single nucleus, mitochondrial DNA is actually more abundant. This all makes mitochondrial DNA useful in studying how humans have evolved and migrated around the world. By studying mitochondrial DNA, scientists have the evidence that all humans are descended from a single individual that lived in East Africa, who's been called African Eve. Because every human inherits their mitochondria from their mother, it's only possible to track human evolution using this down the maternal line. From the African Eve, mitochondrial DNA shows us how humans migrated out of Africa, crossing into Asia 
only around 60,000 years ago. From there, some lineages migrated north through Europe, with others moving through Asia, eventually reaching Australia and North America. This migration was mostly driven by changes to the climate, with the end of the Ice Age allowing humans to survive at much higher latitudes than previously. So human evolution can be studied by examining fossils, studying stone tools and by looking at mitochondrial DNA. Fossils tell us how humans have adapted to a change in habitat and that brain size has increased. Stone tools have become more sophisticated and effective as larger brains have allowed humans to make better tools. Mitochondrial DNA has been used to study recent changes in human distributions and migrations as the rapid mutation rate and abundance within cells makes it easier to study changes than nuclear DNA.